You guys remember the base that cannot be raided? Just smashed 1.5 million views, 40,000 likes. It was a great video. It had Helen Keller. Mr. Black! Wow! The legendary Sir Winter. What do we got going on up here, fellas? And of course, what most Rust players would agree, the strongest fucking base in the world. However, while the pros included needing about 100 rockets to raid, being a total pain in the tip to raid, and of course cheap enough for a solo to upkeep, it also had its cons, like being vulnerable to the disconnect glitch. And it was a pain in the ass to actually live in. Fortunately though, the people at Face Punch recently patched the disconnect glitch. It was no longer glitchable, it was actually stronger. It now became the strongest fucking base in the world. Times two. But what about the other con? I needed a cave as strong as this one, but much easier to use. One that was prettier. One that didn't use a rope bucket. And I found it. Hidden somewhere on the map is a secret tunnel. And it is a very special tunnel. It's a tunnel very similar to the one that you find at military, except it's standalone. It can spawn in any biome. And much like the Kardashian family, it is filled with massive gaping holes. All the tunnels in here are dark and confusing. Except for one. Door number two. After a small mine shaft and a brightly lit tunnel, you get to a patch of blue lights on the roof. A cave exit to your right. And the entrance to that cave on your left. Down a naturally lit tunnel you'll find Noob Nightmare or the spike pit of death. Just beyond that point, a massive, always lit cave. It has high ceilings, wide walls, beautiful blue lighting, and enough space to fit a clan. Now while life is too short for difficult entrances, I'll be sealing up the entrance and making the exit my sole entry point to the space. So, when I enter the magic cave, I will head to this batch of blue lights. Never again using the spikes, I head for the exit, down a short tunnel, to get over here. While it may be easy to spot with a fire burning at the top, you would miss it otherwise. I have to jump up onto this little rock over here and then onto that platform to get inside. It's a little tricky at first, but once mastered, it's a breeze. The clumsy entrance is what will serve as the main base's defense. I plan on putting turrets by that fireplace over there, and whilst the raider flops up the slope, you will get shredded down quicker than a samurai on 300 grams of meth. Now I know how sneaky raiders are. They like to fire incend rockets at turrets. And turrets don't like fire. And the jumping needed to enter the cave will prevent a raider from firing because you cannot fire a gun while jumping. And in the unlikely event that they manage to fire a rocket from outside of the exit, the low walls will prevent the fire from reaching your robot bouncer. Another nice thing about low walls is that they prevent the turret's laser from exiting the cave hole. So anybody who runs past that opening won't actually see the laser beam. It aims into the wall. However, turrets do aim up and down, so the moment the raider actually gets up to that platform, they will instantly be respawning back at their base, in their sleeping bag. Other cool features of this cave include a partial third story ceiling over here, and a corner itching for a TC or some kind of a high value loot room. I don't know, that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to use this space. I will tell you this though, a good idea would be to start by placing a foundation at the entrance, trying to make sure that it's definitely as center as possible. Once centered, wall it off and armor the lot. As well as the second layer of armor. The sides can be whatever you want, sheet metal, stone, it makes no difference. The raider can't actually fit through the side. You just want to cover it up so that they can't see down the sides and start working out how to raid it. An armored roof is definitely necessary though to prevent the rats from squeezing through. These four armored pieces, roof, walls, foundation, costs a mere 9 high quality metal per 24 hours to upkeep, which is basically nothing, and it requires an impressive 32 rockets to penetrate. At this point, you go ham. You make it as strong as you want to. The more honeycomb you add, the stronger the base becomes. Me, being a disgustingly filthy role player, does not want to sacrifice my beautiful light, so I opted for two high quality walls and two sheet metal walls, making the cost of entering this base from the front 48 rockets worth, which is not bad. Remember, I need comb two layers tall to be safe and always check the sides to make sure that nobody can fit through. If you can fit, so can they. Now again, I'm not going to tell you how to build your base, but I do imagine my base being uncluttered, beautiful, have a whole bunch of storage containers lined over the back wall. Maybe using that side area for like a TC or high value loot room, explosives maybe. 
that type of thing. I can suggest this though, the more turrets placed, the faster they kill. I'd make the entrance with triangles and use prison cells so that the turrets can shoot through them. If they were to find an incense rocket and it landed inside your turret room, it will completely burn it up like three turrets and a big bowl. Nice. One thing I would recommend for your turret room, get rid of the low walls, put on half walls, stack on more half walls and then destroy the lower half walls. Replace them with low walls, leaving you with a military style pillbox. The likelihood of them firing a rocket and into that small gap to destroy your turrets is virtually impossible. I've seen people do some crazy shit but not this. Fuck no. As mentioned before, another great feature of this cave is the third floor. Perfect for hidden loot or if you're a real man, an adorable bedroom. Can you imagine the amount of things you can fit into this huge amount of space? But my favorite thing about this entire cave is the electricity. You can actually reach electricity from the surface to the cave. So just beyond these angled half submerged garage type thingies, about where this piece of wood is, is where the build zone starts. I'd highly recommend you pop down the surface base as a farming station and to serve as an electricity station for your cave. Get some authorization, attach a cable, while attached run down the tunnel to magic door number two, up the secret exit very clumsily and you will see that the cable just just reaches the ground. Now I imagine my electronics would be on the third floor all hidden away and professional like and just like that, a world of electricity awaits. Which means, no more darkness. Or even better, auto lights. Self promotion! Or better yet, my latest invention that I thought of mere seconds ago. The daytime detection system 3000. Pop down light, solar panel, and boom. You suddenly know when it's daytime and when it's nighttime. The only other advice I can give you, if you want to live in cave number two, do two things. One, put a TC on the surface, because sometimes other people move into the other tunnels and it makes encounters and moving about quite awkward, which will allow you to place the turrets, essentially evicting them. And two, never ever build a base if this tunnel system spawns in the snow biome. It is an absolute nightmare and I spent 90% of my wipe standing near a fireplace. There's no food and healing was a bitch. It was the worst wipe of my life. So in the desert or in the forest, by all means, take the base, put a TC on top and you're good to go. There's a million ways how you can use this beautiful space. Be it role player or clan zerg-like, makes no difference. The only problem is, you might not be able to find it, because it's that hidden away. Thank you again for watching, and as always, flack out. And just a couple of announcements, I do want to say sorry to my follower from France, Baguette Colossip34. I do apologize, I forgot him out of the credits for last week's video where we had an epic cinematic to take our land back. There was a whole bunch of us, there were thousands of people talking over the Discord, things were confusing. Unfortunately, I forgot to mention him in the credits and I just wanted to say sorry buddy, you're awesome. Also, another thing I would like to mention is that I'm going to be holding a $500 PayPal giveaway. But before you get excited and get your panties in a bunch, please note that this is going to be a very complicated and rather lengthy competition. See, what I plan on doing is hiding a secret code in every video from this video. The first person that emails me the message I win will win a $500 PayPal prize. Obviously, first come, first serve, the secret code will be hidden within the video in a very inconspicuous area. Only the sharpest eyes will find it. So, for the next five videos, starting with this video, there's going to be small secret codes hiding somewhere in the frames. It will occupy about three frames. Put those codes together in order. It will form an email address. And once you have that email address, the first person that emails me, I win, will win $500 PayPal. A special shout out goes out to my beautiful Patreons. They are growing in numbers. We are getting stronger. The guys on screen are the people that fund my operation and I wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that gives. You guys are the lifeblood of the channel and I cannot physically do this without you. So if you want to become a part of the Patreon squad, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch because I seem to be doing that more often lately, or follow my now awesome Discord, please be sure to click on all of my social links in the video description below. 
Thank you again for watching, and as always, luck out. All game footage was recorded, played on, edited, and rendered on the new Predator Triton 500. This is a monster machine. You guys have to check it out.